Well, thank you everyone for allowing us to come and present to you today. We're really excited to uh, learn a little bit more about you and your, your plan and the goals that you have for your, your participants and to share with you a little bit of our experience and background that we think is well suited for, for your plan. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague Sarah Morgan and myself, Kent Fitzpatrick. Uh, both of us are senior consultants at Asset Strategy Consultants, both with over 25 years of experience. I'm going to demonstrate that by needing my spectacles later this morning. Um, and uh, we both focus in uh, institutional uh, consulting. Uh, if you were to hire us, uh, we would be the team servicing your account. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Asset Strategy. I don't know, um, I'm not. Today we're going to have this be more conversational. So we did leave a book for each of you, but we're going to not really delve into that. If you have questions afterwards, some of the um, sample reports or things we reference may be in there. But I wanted to kind of speak through this more. Um, but to give you a little highlight of Asset Strategy, Asset Strategy has been uh, around for about 25 years. We're a national consulting firm. We have six offices from New England to Florida. Um, our focus is retirement consulting, institutional only. Uh, which means we focus in the defined benefit, defined contribution, which your plan being a, a 403B uh, falls under defined contribution, 401K, endowment foundation. Um, we are um, uh, going to start off with maybe getting a little clarity because we were pleased to get this appointment, but we unfortunately didn't get a lot of background from our colleague to get a better understanding of your plan. So first, I'd, I'd, I'd like to get a better background understanding of, of, of your plan, your goals, and interest of, of working with us. Um, secondly, I'll, I'll get into a little bit deeper about, about us, um, and I'd like to tell you about the types of clients that we serve, um, and then finally the services we offer. Um, so uh, Clark, if you don't mind, uh, before we get started, can you tell us a little bit more about your plan? Um, we know that you've had a relationship with TIA, but could you tell us a little bit more about the type of plan, your relationship with, with, with TIA, and maybe what goals or objectives you have? For your plan? Um, well, we have uh, roughly about 600 employees. Um, the plan's got $60 million of assets. Uh, we hired a consultant about a year ago. Uh, he's taken us through conversion to um, adding more funds to the plan. And is your plan mostly using the, uh, the individual annuity platform? Uh, have you morphed? to the retirement choice, the more open architecture platform yet, or is that something you're looking towards? No, we, we have added that. Yeah. Um, and how is the uh, participants' response? Do you have good participation rates? Is there um, needs for education? Uh, what, what are any, any particular areas of focus that you'd like to learn a little bit more? Well, our, you know, our employees have gone through the this conversion process, but I think, um, I mean, there's, there's a great need for them to under, better understand what they have. So, so has there been a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling, re-enrollments, education? Um, There's been um, a fair amount of that at the conversion, which was about a year ago, and now it's sort of tapered off. And yeah. what's your participation rate? Our participation rate is, is very good. You know, we have a very high contribution level. I mean, we match 100 cents in the dollar up to Mm. That's very generous. Very generous. Yeah. Well, that's cool. We like to be generous. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and that, I'm sure, it helps you attract and retain your talented faculty and oh, administration. Yeah. Very important to us. Yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you for that. that. That's helpful for us to understand your, your background. And so you've been with Tia for how long now? Uh, probably 20, 25 years. Really? Really? Are you happy with that relationship? Our faculty loves to loves to eat. And are you satisfied with the expanded menu that you're able to offer your participants now? I think it's been a good good change for them. Excellent, excellent. Well, one of the things I like to tell people right up front is, you know, we are collaborative. So if you have a solid relationship with your vendor, we can work in conjunction with them, but we work for you. So you know, we we know the the, the chinks in the armor. We know you know when to where to press. Um, so, but we represent our clients such as you. So. We're happy to, to engage and work, continue to work with, with Tia, uh, but I just wanted to say that right up front. Um, so, so our role um, is as a fiduciary, which means we have to put the interest of you and your participants first, by definition. 
And I like to uh, use uh, that word first, F-I-R-S-T, as an acronym for you to remember you know, what we do and <coughs> what makes us different. Um, so if I could walk you through that, um, F, no, F is for focused. Uh, first of all, we only provide investment consulting, um, predominantly for retirement consulting and to drive participant outcomes. So we are not health and welfare, we're not HR consulting, we are focused strictly in the institutional consulting space. Um, and we, we, we put it in writing that we act in a fiduciary capacity. Now your plan is a bit unique because you're a church plan, so that means you're exempt from ERISA, but it doesn't mean you're exempt from acting in a prudent process and, and putting your participants first. So you're still subject to, to liabilities, you're not subject to the Department of Labor um, under the auspices of, of ERISA, but you still are a fiduciary uh, to your participants. I, I is for independence. So we are not beholding to any vendor, uh, insurance company, brokerage, we have no proprietary funds. We have only our, our intellectual capital to, to share with our clients. So we are truly uh, objective and, and at, at arm's length. So I, we think that that's an important one. So ours for resources. And over the last 24 years, we've created a strong and stable um, team of consultants, analysts, and um, retirement plan specialists, specialists. And we have several people on our staff that spent 20 plus years in the record keeping industry. So they bring to our team a, a unique perspective. They know it from the inside out and help us uh, work with other providers like TIA or any other of the third party administrators. And so I, we think we, we have a diff a unique approach to our, and a more holistic approach to our consulting relationships with clients just like Cabrini. Um, I think in addition to that, um, we established a relationship um, 24 years ago when we founded the firm with a much larger consulting organization, Callum Associates, and it's one of the largest consulting organizations in the world, really, uh, it's certainly in the country. They consult on over $2 trillion worth of assets, and their average client is um, you know, $8 billion. And so what they bring to uh, our uh, the equation is that we are able to leverage all of that proprietary performance evaluation software, whether it be for managers or asset allocation software, and we also are able to tap into the capital market um, research. So it's another tool that we have access to. Um, and S is for services. You know, what, what do we provide? It's designed to, we're designed to provide Cabrini with the tools and the resources and the education um, with your fiduciary duties um, and to enhance outcomes for your plan participants. You know, we're all focused on retirement readiness to be able to retire with dignity. And so the services that we bring to you, we, um, or, or to, <laughs> or, or to get to that end. Yeah, and I would also echo that. I would say that S is not only for service, but also for size. We, we think that our size is, is a unique attribute. Um, and I, I picked up from your website um, that it said that, um, you see, I see that 50% of your students are first generation, and that you have an award-winning first year experience, which you should be commended for that. And what that tells me is that you provide a caring, welcoming, and attentive environment in, in your smaller school. We reflect a lot of those same, same qualities. We t take care and pride in the relationships that we've had. Some of our relationships go back more than 20 years. Um, the, the other thing I want to mention too, since this is a defined contribution plan, we do uh, uh, consult on nearly $8 billion of assets, but 25% of our clients are defined contribution. And, and of that, Group, there's a, a subset that are in um, the not-for-profit 403B space, but in addition to that, um, have church plan exposure because that's a unique, unique situation. Um, so the, the the last of it, our FIRST is, is team. Our approach is a team approach, meaning that as Sarah and I, as a team for, for your relationship, we work in in, in, a, in a pair. We work in a, in team capacity. And we're supported by a research department and an analyst department, as well as a, a, a service member. So th this way we can collaborate. I have Sarah's back, she has my back. We understand the relationships. If she's not able to make a meeting, you, know, you have me. So it's this, this team approach. Um, so um, with that, I, I wanted to just maybe point out one other um, thing that I also picked up from your website. And it, what it said was, um, you stated that you have a Catholic heritage which provides a learning environment 
that develops literal education uh, personnel who succeed professionally and contribute to their communities. And I think that that probably it talks to what we want to do in terms of services, where we want to help you create a retirement heritage. And you, you focus so much on your students, our role is to help you focus on getting successful outcomes for your, your staff and faculty. Um, so I would say that one of our goals would be to you know, help them retire with dignity. Um, and we define that as, as being able to replace 80, 70 to 80 percent of, of your income. Um, and we'll, we'll get into maybe ways of, of, of doing that, but that's kind of what our, our goal is. I think one other item on the team approach is um, we have uh, a team member that we probably haven't identified as part of this specific team, but uh, Mary Pat Sauerkamp, who had been head of uh, Notre Dame University for 15 years, another Catholic institution, um, we served her in her capacity at, on their investment committee for 15 years, and once she retired, she elected to join us, and she's really head of all of our educational services. And so she brings to bear her experience of 15 years, not, not only working at a faith-based institution, but um, what they experienced uh, from an investment committee standpoint and from on the human resources side. So she adds a lot of value to providing us with perspective with all of the uh, um, all of the balls you're trying to juggle at one time uh, you know, in an educational environment. And so we find her to be a terrific asset and a great sounding board. And she peer reviews all of the work that, that we present to our educational clients. Is the firm that she came from still a client? She came from, uh, yes, school, Notre, Notre Dame is still a client, yes. Any other questions so far? Um, I would like to just maybe pass this out, and this will highlight um, some of the services um, that we want to kind of speak through. <clears throat> I think what you'll find is, is there's a lot of uh, consultants that will maybe focus on these, these first three boxes, if I kind of follow clockwise around, around the, uh, the, the diagram here. Uh, and that's really focusing on the, what I call the three Fs, fees, fiduciary, and funds. Um, and I think that those are all important um, areas that you need to cover and you need to make, make sure you can check those boxes. Um, so we, we certainly can dive deep into um, each of those items such as you know, risk management. So make sure you, you do have a fiduciary process in place. So uh, again, although you're exempt from ERISA, it's important that you, you, you document that you have a inve proper investment policy statement, that you, you have minutes of meetings, that you have a client lockbox. Some, some basic elements uh, to make sure you, your fiduciary process is intact. Um, secondly, total cost controls. Um, this may be more apropos um, given the fact that you're a TIA client right now, and uh, I'm not sure, are you familiar with the, um, the fee change that they um, announced early in the spring? No. Um, well, you're not alone. Um, there's a lot of our clients and, and, and prospects that we're working with right now. Um, in essence, um, TIA Kreft uh, was um, losing a lot of business uh, to the likes of Fidelity and Vanguard, and about three years ago, they thought it was time to, to change their stripes. They, they've always come from focusing on, you know, Andrew Carnegie was actually one of the founders of Tia Kraft, and it was always focused on the educator. Um, but the world's changed, and, and the, the need for a broader investment menu um, is there, and, and if you want emerging markets or you want uh, some diversified asset classes, you may not want just the proprietary uh, offering within Tia Kraft. So vendors like Fidelity and Vanguard, which specialize also in the 430 markets, were quick to recognize that, and they've been taking some market share away. So three and a half years ago, um, TIA opened up the, the platform, as you re referenced before, to what's called retirement choice, which allows for an, an expanded menu. Just recently, on the heels of that, they also changed their pricing structure because th what they've shared with us is that Smaller plans, uh, and you, you may fall kind of somewhere in the middle, but typically smaller plans are being subsidized by larger plans because they have one flat fee structure for all, all plans across the board. And as you, you, you may or may not be familiar, the, the ex within the expense ratio, part of that expense ratio is being used to pay for administrative and, and custody expenses. So just in this past April, they changed the format. Your, your participants probably got a notice, but basically they actually increased their, their fees by about 50% for, for most participants. So unless your plan has in excess of $20 million in um, CREF funds within your, your offering, your, your fee structure has, has changed. So 
one of the things that is, is important at the end of this total cost control is knowing and understanding what those, those fees are and that they're reasonable. Um, so we can walk you through you know, some, some other examples on that. Um, investment management, again, we haven't had the benefit of reviewing your investment policy statement or the criteria. Maybe the consultant you've been engaged with now has helped you as you look to, to an expanded menu, but we would say that that's part of the process. Really where the importance is, is, is really the last two. Um, Fidelity did a survey a couple years ago that said 86% of um, participants are looking for some or a meaningful nudge by their employer, meaning that you can change the dime, not just by the investment menu, but maybe by, by plan health and plan optimization. So what that means is using things like behavioral finance or plan design or your match formula to incentivize people. You know, other studies have shown that you need to be deferring between 10 to 15 percent if you're going to replace that 70 to 80 percent of income for the rest of your life. And we find that a lot of you know, participants stop at the match, and it's, it, it's not enough. So plan design or plan health, plan optimization, we, we think is, is key to, to plan success. And then finally, all of these things are great, but at the end of the day, if we haven't done our job and people can't retire with dignity and replace that, that income level, um, then why, why are we doing this? So really, it, it's all about the success of your participants. And so we, we have a process that, that will show you an action plan to, to, to not just looking at fees, fiduciary, and funds, but to optimization and, and, and outcomes. Um, anyhow, um, do, any other questions on, on some of the, uh, the chart there? Yep. Um, do we have any other um, questions that you wanted to hear from us uh, today in terms of our services or some areas that you're uh, interested in with your plan? What, what do you do with education? <coughs> well, do you want to take that? Or? No, you can take okay. it. Okay. Um, well, again, your relationship, uh, you have a, a relationship assigned by, by Tia Kref. And again, we want to augment that relationship and make sure you're getting the, you know, the bang for your buck. Um, and a lot of that is holding the vendor to what, the, what you've already paid for. So in other words, we talked earlier about some of those expense ratios and offsetting plan expenses. That's not just for vesting, testing, 5500. It's for enrollment, it's for materials, it's for websites, it's for call centers. And we find that a lot of plans are not taking advantage of that. Um, we have a, um, a similar client um, who's a, 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 a Catholic, private Catholic school in Massachusetts that we just helped move from a the legacy platform to the new platform, um, and without um, our involvement, they were going to keep the pricing exactly the same. So I think it was 24 basis points was what the pricing was for this particular example. Through our process, we were able to negotiate that to 18 basis points and make sure we benchmarked it with, with the marketplace. And if plan your size, that difference of even six basis points is $36,000. So those are resources that you may not be unlocking on your own that we as consultants can you know, know where the pricing is um, and, and know what services. So things like not just one, one re-enrollment meeting, but multiple enrollment meetings, you know, website education, you know, you know, PowerPoints, uh, the, the call centers. I mean, these are all resources. And we can also augment that or customize what, what you're looking for and, and do our own education and enrollment meetings on site. <clears throat> Any, anything else? How do you charge? Um, typically, it depends upon the engagement. Um, so we can either charge a, a flat fee, depending upon the project or assignment. So if we're, we're hired to do a vendor search, um, you know, we, could, we could quote a flat fee depending upon the number of vendors. If it's an ongoing role where we're going to have fiduciary responsibility and liability, um, we could charge a percentage of assets. Um, so it really depends upon um, you know, what services you're looking uh, for us to provide. When would you charge one versus the other, one style versus the other? Uh, typically, it has to do with us acting in the capacity as a fiduciary. So if, if we're going to have ongoing and increasing liability, we would want to charge a percentage of the, of the plan because our exposure increases as the plan increases. Um, but if it's something proportionately. Yes. Um, but if it's something such as a project, you know, you want to do a new vendor search, um, then that's something we may engage you on on just a flat fee basis. Have you uh, worked in conjunction with TIAA CREF in the past? Uh, we've had several clients that we've represented that have TIA as a vendor. Um, what we found in this space is um, there's a long history with TIA Craft. So people are in, in, endeared to TIA Craft, and we respect that. Um, but we also want to be an advocate for educating them on what, what's available outside in the outside world. 
Right. Um, so if, if, if you're happy and comfortable with the services you're getting, the price you're getting, the, the, the menu of funds, uh, that's fine. If, if it's something you want to explore and, and look at competitive options outside of that, that's something that Sarah and I can help you with. Any other questions? Um, well, with that, we'd like to thank you and we hope we have an opportunity to, to work with you. Um, we think we can make a, a, a big difference for your faculty and staff. And if you think about uh, putting them first, focused, independence, resources, service, service thank you. And team. <laughs> <laughs> think of us first. Thanks so much. That was part of the problem is that because Sarah's more endowment foundation based, and I'm very familiar with this TIA marketplace, and I, I felt like I, I took too much of the. Well, let's airtime. let's just just for the just for the practice, let's change them to be an endowment. Okay. And not Catholic, or just just an endowment fund. You're on. Sir. Tell me a little bit about <laughs> what you bring to the table for working with endowment. Well, we have a, a, a very long history in working with endowments, you know, 25 years since inception. And we have um, carved out a niche for ourselves in our area, of, our area of expertise is really focusing on that middle market, that, that 25 to say $500 million um, asset under ma asset space. And so with our, we have 85 clients, our average client size is about $85 million. And so what we bring to the table for clients such as you, and is first of all, you're really right in our sweet spot. We understand the managers that are able to um, service the clients of this size as opposed to clients that are much larger. So I think we bring a unique perspective we're focused on managers that are uh, appropriate for the size of the plan, and I think uh, we have a lot of experience. We've we've um, uh, fifty percent of our clients are endowment and foundation clients, and I think we have a long success, a long track record of having good success. We've had very few um, clients uh, either leave us or terminate us, and I think it's because we go that extra mile in providing them with a very high touch service. We have a team of five that's assigned to every client relationship. So we have two consultants, another consultant that's not affiliated with the relationship to peer review, and then we have client service and an analyst assigned to each, to each client. So I think every client feels as though they're well served um, and um, that, that they understand that they're very important to us. Thank you. <laughs> well, then Al. <laughs> Sorry. No, you did a Sarah. <laughs> that was even better. You were. <laughs> Genie. Plus, Leak me out of the seat. <laughs> one, one, one simple rule. In a, in a meeting, unless you have something to write, don't hold a pen. You didn't even know you had it. Right? I didn't. I know. Mm. Almost everybody doesn't know that they're holding something. How about spectrum? Nice to wear. Oh, you mean holding it? Yeah, yeah, holding versus. Well, that could be, you know, it, when I was sitting here watching you and it was a little distracting, and but I knew, I mean, you needed them to read what you were talking about, but you didn't. Tomorrow you won't need them, will you? Tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I need them every day. Here's a, here's a tomorrow? I can't see anything. Well, you're right, because I'm going to speak through it. So, uh, in fact, I would ask your uh, your colleague here what what his reaction was. Did the, was that off throw, throwing you off a little bit with his class? No. Okay. Some people it does. Yeah. Especially when you've got just like sometimes the light <laughs> reflects off, and then that can really seem a little little strange. But uh, um, how'd it go from your standpoint? Um, not, not interactive enough. Um, I guess my style is to draw. I, I, you know, I felt like I was I talked way too much and, and you know didn't um, 
draw my partner in more. I mean, you know, again, maybe that was just some of our, our preparation, but I would have liked to have the client speaking more so I could, could have kind of hope focused in on what their their hot buttons were. Um, I, I, I think I, I didn't kind of seize on the um, some of the things that he said that were they've done or haven't done or they'd like to work on, um, you know, like deferral rates. Um, you know, that, you know, subpar participation or deferral rates can have a direct economic impact on the employer because people are retiring later. So it's costing them more on health and, and other benefits, which, you know, to, to a school, that's that's an important thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I, I missed a couple of opportunities. I, I spoke too much. But I think he also said that they had a very high participation rate and you know very generous match, and that they were generally pleased with the very with the generous. transition. So yeah, but I should have said then you know what is it that you're looking for? Because I, I didn't make him tell me you know what why are we here? Someone made an appointment. Yeah, but except that I felt uh, myself that it was more of a presentation that I was giving when I was doing it, and most of the time when I give a presentation. Yeah, yeah. So that all of us are talking together, and somebody he'll come up with a nasty comment. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that's what was missing. Is that I would have liked to have yeah. that more yeah. interaction. Yeah. You know, tell me more about that. You know, let's let's get mad. Yeah. Delve into that. No, I'm not mad. I'm going to get even tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you're asking questions, and I I applaud the fact that you did. There may be a slightly better way to do it than you did. Okay. Now I'll give, I'll give you an idea. You you were asking very direct questions, and they were they were to what you were looking for, but you weren't particularly encouraging to get him to talk more. Yeah. yeah. So instead of saying what are who what not, start off by saying, would you please explain to me, or would you please describe for me? More open ended. Is. And that's those words subtly. Mm -hmm. Say, tell me, you know, spill your guts. Tell me everything you know. Yeah, and, and then you just sit back and listen, and uh huh, and uh, tell me more and whatnot. And pretty soon, he's running the whole show, and you're getting the information that you need to then come back and say, "Well, let me tell you what we do." In, in, with situations, you're looking to see if there's a parallel situation, a pretty close parallel with somebody you're already working with. And that was the opening I was looking for earlier, and I, I tried to kind of stuff the, the example in you know, later when you would ask about participant education, about maybe cost savings and, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I think I kind of stuffed it, forced that in there, but. Well, you, well once you got on a roll, she, she wasn't there. I know. So, uh, and so right. you, you, you do have to be very mindful of, yeah. of your, you, when you intervened at some point, which I thought was excellent because it, 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 it was good teamwork on your part to compliment or yeah, compliment in the additional sense what he what he was talking about. But other than that, I didn't see too much of you, so I didn't. I don't really. <laughs> but tomorrow Sorry. I'll fix that. <laughs> um, but Kent, the uh, things that I like particularly of uh, are you aware of? We find that. Uh, your website, just references which were very personalized to them, conversational, drawing out information, eye contact, glasses notwithstanding, were good, conversational style, good pace. Uh, so I, uh, I just think you just some 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 minor adjustments. Your experience shows Thank both you. both of your experiences. Yeah. Any thought? Can you finish now? Just one broad comment, drawing in the mission they espouse in writing for their, their students, which is that caring and success, and to loop that back into the same philosophy for your Well, because what I was thinking is... I thought would really contain any HR person. Yeah, because they're, they're a small small employer. Yeah. We're a yeah. small you know, consulting a small family. Firm, so I wanted to play that as a strength, yeah. you know, as a, in a compliment at the same time. And just to say that you went to their website. Uh, yeah, I think that's something, yeah, that yeah, I think always scores points. In my well, let me tell you about the meeting Clark and I had, because it did follow what you're trying to do. We had the benefit of a very open, <coughs> HR woman that was open book, 
and there was a dialogue, mm. and we were, as you were, looking for where's that hook, so they've got it consulted, <laughs> there was high participation, all of the, the things normally can attack, we don't know, no, we can't get that, and it got down to, we finally got into custom target days and guaranteed income, huh. she kind of sat up in a chair, and went, ah, there's the moment we were waiting for, but it took, that type of approach of probing, 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 yeah. with a very receptive professional that uh, mm. gave us the courtesy and respect that made the meeting very productive. You know, we had six minutes. We probably could have asked them, you know, in their transition, <coughs> had they had they added new products or strategies to, um, you know, guarantee income right. and strategies or whatnot. And I think one of the things that, I again, I miss, missed um, was being able to open up a conversation about fee levelization. So even though you guys have hired a new consultant, you changed the menu, you know, have you addressed fee levelization within the platform? Uh, they like, might be like, what yeah. does that mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. Explain that. And What's we, new that they haven't already done? <coughs> yeah. Do you do that? Uh, Fidelity will not down to 20 million. I don't know about Tia. Actually, no, I take it back. Tia will. Actually, I'm working through that with the case right now. Okay. I had two. I, I wanted to take a minute and tell you about two experiences in my career that have had a profound influence on all of the things that I've said to you today. <laughs> and while they're not exactly congruent with, with what you talk about, you, I, I think you'll pick it up real quick. Uh, I, in a spirit of complete diligence with a new client, spent the best part of two days preparing for the annual meeting with a company called FMC Corporation, a big food processor in Chicago. And they had 23 managers and six plans, and it was just, you know, more, more data than you could shake a stick at. And I, you know, these are back in the days when we had acetate, acetate overheads that we showed. And anyway, I went in and, and did, uh, did an hour with the board and with the treasurer in particular who was my contact. And I thought I had done a great job. And they were all very complimentary. And the treasurer said, could I see you for a minute? I said, sure. Uh, expecting to really be. And he said, you know, um, you could have done that in about maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> I said, he said, he said, we just need to know four things. Are we meeting our internal rate of return? Are we staying within our risk boundaries as established by commitment to equities? Do we have any managers that are doing extremely well and why? Do we have any managers that aren't doing extremely well and we need to take action on it? I think it's probably a page. If you could just make a page like that and bring it in and let's talk about it, <laughs> we'd love you. <laughs> Wonderful lesson learned. I mean, just. From that day on, everything in my mind was executive summary and then ask them if they wanted <laughs> questions. The other lesson I learned, painful lesson, this one, was with the Pittsburgh Symphony uh, Foundation. And, uh, and this is to, to you Pennsylvanians. It's uh, Heinz Hall in Pittsburgh and it's the most fantastic place. Mm -hmm. You been there? Mm -hmm. Ah, neat, neat place. And upstairs and then looking down over the and I'm presenting to the captains of industry in Pittsburgh. I mean, it's everybody that's anybody is on that board. And uh, so I'm in there replacing another person temporarily. So I'm gonna flex my muscles and show up. And I, I do, I do a similar type of presentation uh, that I did with FMC, only fewer managers. And so when I was all done and I asked for questions and there was a dead silence in the room and finally, there was a person down at the end of the table, I mean, further, a little further away than you, but I couldn't see his face here. He said, Mr. McDowell, it is Mr. McDowell, isn't it? I said, yes, he said, uh, Mr. McDowell, you have just wasted an hour of our time. You have just been, been thorough in explaining to me what we could read. You haven't broken any new ground. You haven't told us how we're going to be able to afford principal soloists how we're going to replace the, uh, the, the, the wing by the stage, commission new music. You have, frankly, wasted our time. In the future, Mr. McDowell, if you come out, will you look forward instead of looking backward? Will you give us some idea of how we can 
I'm, st I'm, I'm just devastated. <laughs> I was absolutely devastated. And it was, uh, the, by the way, the person that said all this was Sir Andre Previn, who was the musical oh, yeah. director for, for the Pittsburgh Symphony at the time. Yeah. Good lesson. So, I mean, it's more of a client servicing lesson than it is a new business lesson, but always look forward. Don't dwell too much in what happened. Talk about what's likely to happen, what they should be thinking about, you know, what are the issues and everything. I, and I could, you know, it just it just made an imprint on my mind. So. Took two of them to lift you out of your chair? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> just, it was, it was a Well, this is, like I said before, the first thing that a consultant should do when he gets involved is find out what the needs of the organization are. Yeah. Period. I didn't have that luxury. I didn't, I didn't have any, you know, I showed up throw up. You know, there was just, just <laughs> literally what I did. Another time, but, but that, see, there, there's always good, there's always sun shining after the rainstorm. And I did University of South Florida, and on the board was George Steinbrook. Whoa. Okay, and, uh, and Dewey the Selman boss. and a few other people that were, were historical at the school. And the manager came down from New York and just went, he just went on and on and on. And you could see George turn red because he wanted to go over to Tampa and <laughs> see his team and everything. And so finally he said, uh, he kept coughing. And so I said, uh, uh, I think uh, to the manager, I said, let me, let me sum up uh, what you've been, because he wasn't even close to being done. And I said, so I did, you know, I did two minutes. Essentially, you know, your, your, your plan calls for you are, you know, here's maybe one or two things that we should be talking about going forward. And Steinbrenner came up to me afterwards and shook my hand and said, thank you very much for getting me out of here. So I figured that was my, my, my one, <laughs> you won that one. My one, two minutes of uh, pleasure, yeah. He didn't fire you. Hmm? He didn't fire you. No, 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 no. It's well, I, but, but then it was just a, it was just a one time. I just going up to fire Billy Moore. Yeah. He did. <laughs> Three times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground today. We've uh, heard a lot of concepts. Anything that you'd like to just bring up before we break for the day and get set for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Any, big, any question. big concern. We see an example of two communities and two different approaches. Mm -hmm. We have different offices. Maybe there's this topic for tomorrow. It's obvious as we develop the packages that everybody's going to use, we need to have a script for any one of our conference calls we do with the consultants. We all understand how to use the material so we're not getting totally divergent presentations. Of what, what's the philosophy or the strategy? How do we want to tell the story? And there's always room for tangents, but 80% of the core has got to be consistent. Right now, we don't have anything that comes even close to that kind of continuity. It's always been, there's the package, good luck. Yeah, Keith, that, that would be valuable feedback, too, to look at some of these sample decks and say, these are the four things you need to have in there. Everything else can be pulled out of a bag if someone wants to know about fiduciary or benchmarking or a sample report. And I think a lot of times we stuff everything with the kitchen sink in there. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's got the thud factor, but it may be completely irrelevant. Um, so I, I think like that would that. be helpful. <laughs> hmm. Just the size of the material yeah. is in itself. Uh, it's it, it, it's awesome in in the sense that it's it puts it, it just causes me to put off. I mean, and I I appreciated all the stuff you sent me, but when I got it, my impression was: Do they give this to all their clients? <laughs> No, it's, yeah, it's that's really, the, the one main problem I think we have is that we really have too much of the stuff. So materials have to support the story. There's a storyline. You can develop it. I, I've given you sort of a primer for how to get it started. And from that, just the what qualifies us to be here, how do, uh, how do we work with our clients, what is our, what is our consulting philosophy, 
I mean, there's some, some basic questions that you would want to answer under any circumstances. And start there. And then from that, ask yourself, if I need to illustrate this, what do I use to illustrate? So naturally, in the beginning, maybe it's just, uh, it's just five or six sentences, very simple sentences that describe you as an organization, your qualifications. It's the client list that you use as the background for how do we work with our clients. And, it's just, and then all of a sudden, 68 pages whittles down to about 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there may be an appendix, depending on certain, but, but right off the bat, you're, you're making it less. Uh, a, a simple thing. You have 10 pages at the most, one minute per page, maybe eight pages. And then instead of doing one like this thing that we got, have tablets, I mean, uh, uh, tabs, where you have a list of appendices, and it has this and this and this and that. And you'll have clients that want to delve into page 94 of section 3. But most of the time, when you get to the end of the eighth page, finished and you can say what is it the work plan that we propose for you and it's this and then stop because so much of this stuff and I've always thought that is just paper that people don't look at as from the standpoint of today yeah. and the objective of growing your business is your job when you're out in front of a prospect or a client, is it to sell or to educate? <clears throat> primarily, I'm primarily. Well, you're selling through education, so. <clears throat> I think selling is what, you, educate is what you do on an ongoing basis with the clients. And that's what I tell them first thing. But I think what you're trying to do is convince them that you're the right consultant for them. Initial, pr prospectively, yeah. and then ongoing. <laughs> yes, it's a con. You're always selling. I know there's a certain so so of my ABC. clients. Yeah, always yeah, always be closing. Yeah, uh, but always be staying too at the same time. Yeah, that the 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 requirements for being compelling, and that's what I call it is to make, make sure you understand where decisions are made in the selling process. They're not made up here. They're made down here. People vote with their stomach lines. People make decisions based on how they feel, how it affects them. I didn't believe this at first. I'm convinced now that that's exactly what happens. I was convinced from the time I did the story of the study to the fact that people make emotional, visceral, buying decisions, retention decisions. It's not saying education is important. I think it's very important. But it comes to support the compelling selling decision. So now to your point, Bill. I want eye contact. I, don't, I, don't, I, I can have eight or 80 pages. Doesn't matter. But I want you looking at me. And I want you looking at me when I'm making statements that I believe are compelling. And anything that gets in the way of that, to me, is getting in the way of the opportunity to get the business. Absolutely. Okay. So that's that's where I'm coming from. Obviously. My view, and you'll find this tomorrow, I'm confident you will, is that when you get comfortable with the notion that I don't need the book to tell the story, then you'll use the book correctly. You'll use it to support, you won't use it to replace. But all you need is the, just the realization that people respond better to somebody having a conversation than have somebody getting a presentation. We call it a presentation. That's not what you want. Okay? So what's the, this ABC consulting two-minute drill? What are we going to be doing with this? You, you can use it as a guide to a two-minute presentation you're going to give tomorrow. Uh-huh. All right. You can also use it as a guide to how to set up a skeleton structure for any presentation you give as it applies to the investment side. 
and you may <coughs> modify it for other services that you provide. You just don't necessarily have to change the words. And, mm -hmm. But it's just an indication mm -hmm. that you can, at 40,000 or 50,000 feet, give your entire presentation in two minutes or less. This one comes in at about 213, is what you're looking at there. So what's your feeling on PowerPoints? What are you doing? Are you selling or educating? Then I'm not a big fan of it. But if you use PowerPoint, it, is, it assumes that you've got a, a fairly large audience, number one. Number two, anytime they look up, your back is never turned to them. You're not reading off the screen. You're not reading off the PC or anything like that. Eye contact. That's, that's what's critical. Can we use the teleprompter tomorrow? Can you? <laughs> not with those sunglasses. Right? <laughs> Keith, I have a question for you. So um, we're the third presenter of the day. First two went in the morning. They broke for lunch. The, you're coming in at one o'clock. <coughs> you're the main guy holding it. We're presenting. And you're, Are you the last, or we're the last? And you're and you're doing one of these because you, you just had lunch. You just had two meetings. You know, and you know you think, my God, he's, he's not hearing anything I'm saying. You know, you know, what, what would you recommend in that? You know, <laughs> it's probably a live live situation. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. I'll be brief. Yeah. The most beautiful words in the English language. I'll be brief. Use your two-minute guide to tell them essentially 90% of the story right there at a high level. And then I'd like very much to make sure that I've answered your questions on this. But I mean, with the whole focus is brevity. And, and if you've sat in on finals and seen the relief on people's faces when somebody was brief or the chagrin when it's just gone on and on and on and your jaws are dropping down, yeah. those lose. They lose. So even if we have you know a 30 minute slot, we're losing the main person, the other people may or may not be engaged. That's correct. Just cut your losses or? Yep. Well, you, you, you mean you've given 30, you, you say, I'll be brief, you take 10. Yeah. And then open it up for questions with more interaction. Exactly right. And you can, you can put a lot of stuff into 10 minutes, sure. especially if you get good at two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One minute a page. Don't, don't say that. that I mean, it's, it's, true. it's well, it, it almost sounds like, all right, turn to page one, and we'll do a minute, and then turn to page two. I mean, that, you shouldn't be thinking that way. I understand what you're saying. I see the math. And, and reason, my, my reaction to that, Bill, it comes from people that their idea of preparation is, hey, you take pages one through five. You take mm -hmm. six through 10. I'll come back and do 11 through 15. Right. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Turn to page one. Mm -hmm. And follow the bouncing bullet point. So we should more align with 90% of it is selling and getting them to like us, and the other 10% is giving them the information they need to know about us. That's right. Yeah. Bye, guys. So tomorrow, we're doing a 15-minute presentation without the books. Yes. So we're going to have to spiff up our delivery, work with our partner to come up with a, a script. All right. And your partner, and you can make a decision to who's going to do this. One of the team members will lead off the 15 minutes in response to something I'm going to say, which is, you know, I got to get out of here in two minutes. Can just give me an idea of what it is you're going to cover with my colleagues. So you're going to spill the candy in the lobby. You're going to do the <laughs> two minute presentation mm -hmm. up front. Mm -hmm. Then your colleague, at the end, somebody's going to wander in at the end of the meeting, miss the whole meeting, only has two minutes to stay. Tell me what you told my colleagues. Kind so, of what we did. Say, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's going to be the same presentation cut mm -hmm. down to two minutes. And I'll cut you off at two minutes. Okay. 
And so you do the two minutes, then you do the full 15, and then you do the two again. Okay. If we have two members presenting, do we just do a minute apiece or? Two, two apiece, up to two apiece. Up you can do two. less. <clears throat> yeah. You can do less, but no more. <clears throat> 